Welcome to Think Deeply, Speak Simply, brought to you by Present, a show about the art and science of communicating ideas and how business professionals can unlock their careers and achieve their full potential with great communication. And now, here are your hosts, Jay Rook and Antoine Valentone. And with that, let's welcome Ulrike to the show. Ulrike, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. It's a true pleasure to be with you. We are thrilled to have you as well. Ulrike, you've got uh, C-level experience and you've served as a communication coach for executives. Uh, and your newest venture is called Empowering Female Leaders. Can you tell us about Empowering Female Leaders and what inspired you to launch it? Well, it was around women being in executive positions. And I realized that the more women climb up the hierarchical ladder, the least they stay themselves. This is true for everybody somehow, but for women, it's even more so because leaders always try to adapt to the behavior that is around them in the culture. And it's mostly a male dominated environment because it has been shaped for decennies by men. And so women then tend to hide away some specific characteristics, I would say, like being a bit more emotional, being a bit more empathetic. Obviously, not every woman is the same. That's clear. But there are some traits which women tend to hide the higher they claim up the ladder. And this is why I thought we cannot have true diversity if we have women in executive boards, but they are not acting like women anymore. So <laughs> we need to do something about it. And my own situation was a bit similar. I also tried to be less of a woman when I was in my highest position during my corporate career, because I thought if not, I don't fit in. And I think it's a shame because in some decision making processes, I didn't bring in my full expertise and the perspective that I could have brought in. And this is why I shaped Empowering Female Leaders, which is a group, a podcast, and I do specific programs for women as well. Well, that's really fascinating. Um, I, I hadn't considered that, actually, that uh, in some ways you said that maybe the personality would maybe change in order to feel um, like uh, they would fit in at the executive level. So uh, as a follow-up question, can you talk to us about how you view the relationship between communication and career growth? Uh, and as a follow-up, where do you most often see people get that wrong? Well, I think it's very, very closely linked. And communication is not just one of these nice-to-have competencies when it comes to careers. Um, I think it's obviously the enabler because you can have the best competencies, the best expertise and the greatest knowledge of all. But if you're not able to convey the message that you have it, nobody knows. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Now, I know many leaders who are not good communicators and they still climbed up the hierarchy level because they have such great expertise and it got seen anyhow. But I think it's a great accelerator. If you're a good communicator, often when, when, when people have to choose between who will we give this new role of the leader, is it the expert number one who is great in, in, in his area but has no way, you know, no, no engaging way to communicate with people, or is it the other person who is great in communicating with people, then they will choose the communicator for sure. Because they will feel like that is the guy or the lady who will lead the others, who will inspire them to go the extra mile. So I think, yes, it is definitely an accelerator. And I think in the future, it becomes even more important than it already has been over the past decennies. So I think it's something really to watch out for when you want to make a career. Definitely. Yeah. Totally understood. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> you asked me as well what people get wrong and and... And I thought, okay, what is that? Because it could be anything, yeah, many, many little things. But I think there's one basic thing that I see in my trainings when people start a communication training is that most of them think they are not a good communicator and will never be. So many introvert people think I can't be a good communicator. So I don't even try. It's one of these topics that I avoid. And I think this is the major mistake because everybody can learn that. And you can communicate in a very individual way and still be yourself and still be an introvert. Mm -hmm. Sage advice. Uh, Ulrike, uh, salary negotiations or interviews for promotions often dictate our career trajectories and financial success. What can leaders do to put themselves in the best position for a salary negotiation? 
there are two things for me. One is obviously, what are your arguments? Why do you deserve that? What have you achieved? And so on and so forth. But with that comes also the fact that you need to believe what you're saying. You need to believe your arguments. Most people have such a high level of self-criticism. And when I speak about female leaders, it's even higher. It's a, it's a drama, actually, that their body language or the other nonverbal cues, such as tone of voice, for example, the micro mimics in their face will not be congruent with the message of their mouth saying they deserve that new role and they deserve that salary increase, for example. That's one thing. And the other thing people always underestimate and have mostly no clue about is that we all have an inner glass ceiling in terms of how much money we deserve. And if the salary we feel great with, we feel we feel no guilt, no shame is lower than the salary we negotiate for, again, our body language will shout, you do not deserve it. <laughs> and this is something we need to understand first. Where is the shame level or the guilt level? Where is that? And, and heightening that mentally, really, you're programming yourself literally to accept that higher salary before you start negotiating with someone. Mm. Hmm, it's fascinating. Um, I want to go a little bit deeper um, and learn more about um, what you've been uh, working on. Uh, I, on your website, you mentioned three common myths about communicating with impact. Can you share what those are and how we avoid them? So one is about, the first one is obviously people think it's about sending a strong message. So the word sending alone is wrong because that's just a very, very small part of communication. So first myth Communication is not just sending, it's much more also receiving, it's always two-way. And I think that the receiving part is even more important than the sending part. And most people get that wrong, in my opinion. You first have to listen to understand what the other people want, what they need, what they need to hear, and then you send a strong message, actually, so this way around. The other thing is, logically, we all put so much effort into shaping our words or shaping our PowerPoint slides, and we totally neglect everything that is nonverbal or everything that is purely visual as well, just images or using metaphors, for example. And then all the nonverbal cues, the body language cues, we don't prepare for them. Body language is much stronger, has much more impact than words. There are different studies around how much more, actually. Some are very well known, but have been countered now also in the past few years. But however, it's more important and seriously, I don't think that we know anyone, including ourselves, who prepares more our body language than our PowerPoint slides. And I think this is where we also have to understand communication is much more than just a few words that we say or that we write. It is the whole package. And this is why communication is so complex, but also so rich and so joyful, actually, when you get it right. And, and that resonates with me with what you were saying earlier uh, about how some female leaders struggle to bring themselves to the table. And we talk about that holistic aspect of communication uh, and how do we bring our whole selves to the table in all of those ways so that we're integrated and authentic in, in the message we're communicating for greater impact. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's how it all hangs together. So authenticity is, is key, obviously, when it comes to strong communication, to show your personality, to be unique, to be yourself, to be vulnerable as well. I love the work from Rene, Brene Brown, for example. It's fantastic. It's exactly that. You need to have courage to be a good communicator because you have to show yourself and not just a corporate message or a polished message that you have. And that that is the true art in it. And, and you had just mentioned uh, uh, authenticity, which is a great segue to our next question, because one of your areas of expertise is helping leaders to speak with charisma and authenticity. Uh, tell us how uh, does charisma relate to confidence in our communication? And is that a skill that can be learned? So charisma is very, very strongly related to confidence, to self-confidence, um, because if you're not confident, you are inward looking. That means we think about ourselves all the time, being self-aware and thinking, how do I stand? How do I look like? What do I say next? So we are permanently occupied with ourselves. That means that we close down for the outside world. Even in front of a camera, it's like that. It's felt. And it means there's no connection and nothing radiates to the outside. So we first need to feel good on the inside, feel good with ourselves, just have no problem anymore with that and not wasting thoughts about ourselves so that we can fully give, because charisma is about giving, really, giving to the outside world our energy, our ideas, our vision, our passion and all of that. And it can only flow when inside ourselves we are fine with us. And that is the level of confidence. And with that comes authenticity. 
people cannot be authentic if they're not confident. They will always control themselves. Authenticity is also about giving away control because you're just yourself and that is not perfect. So th these things hang very closely together, actually. Indeed, they do. It's almost like a paradox, really. Um, you know, I've read that you believe it's crucial to trade perfectionism for authenticity in our communications. Why is that uh, substitution so powerful? And how do we begin to soften our perfectionist tendencies so we can make that trade? Yeah, it, it, authenticity is, is strong in the sense that we don't see it very often. And the whole world out there with certain social media platforms makes authenticity something very special because so many things are fake <laughs> these days. So it's, it's something very valuable, obviously. But um, now you can have, cannot have any connection without authenticity. It's really about being yourself. Like I said before, you need to feel yourself and you need to be able to show yourself like you are. So what I say to my, to my clients usually, and that often rings a bell because I've never thought about it when they say, how can I be more authentic? Or if I'm a perfectionist, how can I, you know, what can I do about that? And I said, just, just be clear about one distinction in your head and you trade in excellence versus perfectionism. And that's not the same thing because perfectionism, you want it always hundred percent right. And if you are a true perfectionist, you will never get it in your eyes hundred percent right. That's the problem with perfectionism. <laughs> But if you say, okay, excellence is fine. I give my best. If my best is 90%, well, then I'm happy with these 90%. And the 10% I know I will never be happy with because I'm a perfectionist. I know, but I decide to shift my focus on the 90%. I decide just to give my best and to move away this weight on my shoulders to be perfect all the time. Because again, that makes you think about yourself permanently. And then you cannot convey a great message anymore because nothing flows to the other person. And so earlier, Ulrike, you were speaking about how uh, some female characteristics and something that gets uh, suppressed during this process uh, and how women leaders sometimes have different challenges in communicating than male leaders do. Uh, what would your advice be for female leaders on how to integrate their authentic selves and how could male leaders learn from uh, balancing out more of that feminine side? So for female leaders, I, I now speak about the majority, let's say, because it's not about stereotyping and all women are different. I know that. But yeah. many female leaders or women in general are very, very self-critical. They think many female leaders are perfectionists, basically. So the thing is that they never give themselves the self-love that they deserve. And first of all, they need to learn that. And there's a little exercise which I sometimes give them, which is really, <laughs> and the real perfectionists say, oh my God, it's so difficult for me. <laughs> And that is simply I ask them, think about the past 12 months and you write one page, narrow, yeah, full, full, full page. And you just write an, a praise letter to yourself what you did greatly. And that sounds simple for people who are convinced about themselves. But somebody who is highly self-critical will have many difficulties to just write a full page, one full page without diminishing the, the successes that they had. And just understanding the gap between what's written on this sheet of paper and what they think of themselves to create this awareness of how harsh they are with themselves all the time. Because as long as you're doing that, you cannot develop yourself in, in an area where you, where you really shine, yeah? where you really radiate from the inside. So that is about accepting also the flaws and being fine with that because there's so much good and seeing the good let's say now and, and then they can then more accept that they are maybe different or might not fit in like they thought they should fit in into a group for example and oftentimes it's just a false perception because others might be really happy if somebody is a little bit different <laughs> so it's, it's it's a great strength as well and understanding that but it only comes with self-acceptance at the end yeah. and for men it's a bit similar i know many men have the same difficulties they don't want to be like this typical dominant leader that we still have out there and that, that is still the image that we all have anchored in our minds how a leader is even if we don't like it we still have it in mind it, it's like that and I think it's about having also the courage and I know that for men it's sometimes even more difficult because for women you would expect that she is maybe a bit more emotional that she shows more empathy that she puts her finger more on the human aspects of business decisions than on the financial aspects for example 
But for men, this is much more unusual. And I know that many men struggle with that quite a lot because they think that they lose their strength, they lose their status somehow, yeah, or their credibility even. So it's pretty tricky. And that's what, what is like my mission in this corporate world and what I'm doing. I want to change that because mm -hmm. people who have to suppress this kind of way of being because they are like that, they feel unhappy all the time. You ne can never be happy at work. And I think this is this is a drama we should avoid. And we should get into something that is just more real, more human. And mm -hmm. again, the famous word, which we had more authentic at the end. And by this is diverse as well. Definitely. Thank you for teasing that out. Uh, what about today's theme would you like to talk about that we haven't covered already? Um. I'm just thinking, I think we have closed the loop between the between the things. I think it's just important to understand how confidence or self-confidence triggers more authenticity, how this in turn triggers more credibility, how this changes your way of communicating and overall builds that famous charisma that we would love to have. And I think an important message, which I might not have said clear enough yet, we can learn that. Everybody can learn that. And you did, will not be Steve Jobs or Barack Obama, you know, one of these great speakers. No, but you don't have to. We just have our own way of being and being happy with that and fulfilling our potential, which is not the potential of our neighbor or our colleague. I think this is this is what we need to, to do. And this is what we should aim for if we want to have a, a fulfilled professional life, at least. That's something definitely worth fighting for. Um, for sure. Um, tell me, this is a question we ask all our guests on the show. Do you think great business communication is more of an art, a science, and why? It's more of an art, but if you ask me really what it is, I think it's a way of being. <laughs> it's really a way of being. It's, it's not a science because it's not really measurable, in my opinion. I know that you can learn skills and all of that, but at the end, it only works when it comes from the inside out, when it's triggered by your emotions and by your beliefs. And this is far closer to art than to science. <laughs> I would say it's an art. I love that. It. It's the first time we've heard way of being uh, as an answer to that on the show. So thank you for that. W what advice would you have for aspiring business leaders who want to improve their communication? The first thing is, I come back to what I said in the beginning, that the, the first thing is really believe that you can do it. That's the first thing. It doesn't help reading tons of books, going to I don't know how many courses to learn skills if you don't believe that you can ever apply them properly. The first thing is really to empower yourself, to commit to do it, and to learn and to do your best again. Same thing as before, excellence versus perfectionism, by the way. Yeah, this yes. kind of thing. And then it's about when you, when you have this, this, this belief, okay, I can do it. I can learn that. Yeah. Then define where you want to be. And I think good thing is to think about how do I want to be in one year from now? And, and put three words on it, three characteristics. How do you want to be? Not what, how do, how do you want to be? We're really just being. And then self-evaluate. Okay, these three um, attributes. Where am I now? Is there one which I'm pretty good at already? Cool. Are there maybe two? Are there maybe two where I have to change something? And where's the gap? How big is the gap? And then you can define the steps. So that would be step number three. three then really define the steps, what you want to do. And there, I think it's super important to not just go learning the skills, which I call the doing, but also thinking about your mindset, which I call the being, the mindset when you communicate, the mindset, what you think of yourself when you stand in front of a big crowd, for example, when you have to do this famous big presentation to stakeholders that are really important for you. What do you think of yourself? Whatever you think your body will show. So it's super important to work on these two things, the being and the doing, and by this create a communication that is a way of being, like I said just before, where it comes from the inside. And then you can apply all the skills that you have learned with excellence. Love that. You know, I've really enjoyed this conversation today. I've learned a lot from uh, hearing you share your thoughts. Um, and, and I'm sure the audience is going to benefit from um, everything that you've shared as well. I'd like to give you the opportunity to tell our viewers where they can learn more about you. Tell us where they can find you on social media or the internet. So you can find me at ulrikaseminati.com. So my full name.com. The same thing goes for LinkedIn. It's Ulrika Seminati. You can find me there. It's my main social media channel. And then I also have a specific channel that is called Empowering Female Leaders on Instagram. So why not? And I have a podcast called Empowering Female Leaders, <laughs> where I have a bit of a break in December and January. We're 
have less episodes than usually, but where I usually um, uh, interview female leaders around the world in very different positions, different areas. And um, yes, and what I offer for free is a guide that I call Top 10 Achievers Lessons. And it's really about 10 things where I think this is what you can change if you want to achieve your goals. And it goes across what we have discussed in this podcast and a little bit more. So if people want to get that, you can find it on my website as well. No problem. Or just uh, give me a shout out on LinkedIn. It's quite a body of work there. Uh, Ilrika, myself, myself and Antoine and all of our listeners just want to say thank you so much for all that you've shared today. I encourage all of our listeners to go to your site and follow up and learn more uh, about all these topics that we discussed today. But thank you again for coming today and sharing this. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for listening to another episode of Think Deeply, Speak Simply. To learn more about the art and science of communicating ideas, visit our free resources at present.com. That's P-R-E-Z-E-N-T dot com.